All right, guys, headed over to my dad's place. Uh, I had started an intro to this. Uh, uh, I think the video was intro to coal country, PA. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the coal and some of the coal land that's uh, on some of the farms in the area. Um, for those of you guys who've never seen coal before, <laughs> believe it or not, have, we have had people say that already. So it's commonplace for us, but uh, I'll show you what uh, what the coal lands look like over there. I would do it here on my place, but it, on my place it's so far back in the woods and it's in like a swampy area and with all the rain we had, I'm not in the mood to be uh, trudging through uh, swampy coal water. So um, take you over to dad's and uh, show you what, it, what it, uh, the coal land looks like here. All right, guys, what I'm on right now is a path here. It used to be a township road. Um, it was a township road up until the 70s. Hurricane Agnes uh, took out the bridge that's back here. And uh, the township abandoned this road because the bridge was going to be too expensive to replace. And if you look, we're starting to see some coal. So keep walking back here and uh, show you where this stuff is. All right, well, I'm guessing you've never seen an orange uh, creek before. Um, this is what they would call uh, acid mine drainage. Um, this creek is coming from a coal mine that has been draining for uh, many years now. Um, the sulfur content of this uh, creek is <laughs> probably astronomical. You can see it's turned the ground orange over there and just about anything it touches, it turns orange. Um, this is definitely highly polluted uh, water um, as a result from uh, many years of coal mining and the coal industry. Um, this creek is uh, always flowing. Uh, there's a lot of other creeks and streams that drain into this, um, but the majority of it is the uh, mine drainage from a uh, coal mine um, to our north pretty far. Um, this eventually drains into the Chesapeake Bay and uh, <laughs> heads to the ocean from there. But um, yeah, if anybody needs some sulfur for on their fields, uh, you can probably mine this stuff. It'll <laughs> probably do it some good. But um, like I said, this never dries up. Um, in a extreme drought situation, it still flows and it's still orange. And it seems like in drier weather, it turns really dark orange, almost like a, uh, uh, like a, I guess Alice Chalmers paint orange. Um, and then when it rains real heavy and we get lots of rain, it actually turns like a green color. Um, but yeah, it's uh, something you don't go swimming in, something you don't go fishing in. Um, but uh, there is some wildlife. I know there's some snapper turtles I've seen. There is fish in here. There's a catfish. Um, we have fished in it just to see what's in it before. And there's some beaver activity. So yeah, this is uh, what they call acid mine drainage. And you can see Oh, I heard something running around. I have to watch out. There was a bear and or two uh, cubs in the area. So <laughs> Anyway, you can see this bank here That is steadily eroded away and this is solid coal here um, When I was a kid, I remember this bank being out uh, Probably another 15 feet that that much of it has fallen in and eroded away. I mean, it's just a soft like a silt so I'm going to take you back to where the uh, majority of the coal is right now and show you the bridge um, that had washed away. The, or the abutments are still here. So I'm going to get around behind these bushes. All right, well, this is the spot I had thought I'd take you to. It's about the best spot to illustrate the different kinds of coal that we have here. Um, now this is 
considered anthracite coal. And as far as I understand, I'm not 100%, but it's only in this area of Pennsylvania and maybe West Virginia. I'm not, don't quote me on that. I know it has something to do with uh, Appalachia. <laughs> but anyway, let's look down here. We've got pieces that are good size yet. And then we got some smaller, smaller pieces of, and some of this is like a shaley, it, it's, a, it's a mixture of everything. There's rocks in here and everything, but you can see the shiny layers. And then you get down to almost like pebble size. And if you start digging, you get down farther and you have what's called silt, coal silt, or uh, as we've called it growing up, uh, coal dirt. Um, and the silt was kind of left over from the breakers. And uh, I guess the silt back in the early days of the coal industry was pretty well worthless. So it basically was discarded and I guess it over ye the years it washed up here. Um, there's pretty much coal on this property. Um, I've had people estimate, I know he had a, in, the engineer came out from the one local coal breaker and they estimated probably 500,000 tons of this stuff just on dad's property alone. Um, and see there's some better pieces in here, they're real shiny. Um, but it's just laying here flat on the surface. And if you look over there through the tree line, that is wetlands. And it is true wetlands that it's uh, pretty well underwater all the time. So it, it's kind of in a swampy area. Now, I'm at the lowest spot just about in our valley. And by lowest spot, I mean we're probably 830 feet above sea level here. Um, so you're in the mountains, and a low spot for us is over 800 feet above sea level. <laughs> so... But um, we just walk around here a little bit and uh, this sinkhole used to be the farm dump back in the day. There's all kinds of stuff thrown here. I mean, that's 70s, I guess. Uh, there's some old tires here. Some of those tires look pretty old, like from the Model T era. Um, walk out through here. Usually I only do this in the winter time on account of avoiding wildlife because there's all kinds of snakes and bears. And <laughs> but you can see there's rocks mixed in with coal and some of the coal gets pretty shiny. I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera. But uh, anthracite was considered a real high quality coal. Um, now as far as today, uh, it's essentially worthless. Um, back in the 90s, uh, there's a good piece. Look at that. Get the sun shining on here. Back in the 90s, um, the local uh, coal breaker that we have here, um, he did uh, harvest this stuff. And not on this side of the creek, on the other side of the creek um, is also dad's property. That's where the breaker was in the 70s. We used to have a breaker on our property. And I think that's how they managed to get through some of the, tough, the tougher times with farming and uh, weather, a lot of the financial crises that came along with it. And they only had uh, 60 acres tillable here to live on as a family. That's pretty sharp stuff. So it was extra income. Now, like I said, in the 70s when Hurricane Agnes rolled through, uh, it took down the coal breaker. I mean, that was catastrophic for this area. All this was underwater. Um, terrible flooding and destroyed the bridge. And the whole breaker was uh, taken down by the storm. And then shortly after, they decided they were just going to abandon it. So... Um, we had another, another breaker startup and back in the nineties, this stuff was selling for a dollar a ton, um, which isn't a lot. A ton is to get a ton of this. Well, you won't have to dig too far to get a ton, but, um, a dollar a ton at uh, 500,000 tons, it's $500,000. So it's not like it's totally, uh, 
worthless. But the problem is uh, coal has seen a humongous decline and that's kind of the area, surrounding area that I live in has been depressed since the fall of coal. Um, that's what the area where I live was built and structured towards. Um, uh, you had all these coal towns and houses built for people to live in um, that were involved in the coal mining industry. Um, I mean, it just turned into a uh, depressed area uh, pretty well right away when coal stopped being king for the area. So, yeah, huge decline on the coal. So, uh, the issue is DEP and environmental permitting that's required to... Uh, it's not considered mining. I guess they still consider it as mining. We're not going underground to get it. It's all laying on the surface. Um, but the environmental permits are what the issue is. Um, this local coal breaker, they had the permits that transferred from the original uh, coal breaker. And I think that one, there, there's been a coal breaker on this farm since the 1900s, somewhere in there that they were uh, operating with. Um, so anyway, the permits transferred to this other local uh, coal business, and it was kind of grandfathered in. So a couple years ago, I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago, five, six, seven years ago, this uh, coal company that we have, coal was pretty well worthless. Um, they decided to uh, break the lease, and the, permit, the permits that were grandfathered in expired also. So basically... You can't really do anything with it right now. Um, to do it yourself, you'd go bankrupt. You'd bankrupt yourself pretty well right away. Trying to deal with the uh, EPA and all the environmental constraints that come along with that. So there, this stuff is, like I said, it's on my dad's property. It's over at my place. Um, dad's actually has bigger chunks like this. Over at my place, it's more or less just the silt. Now, as far as the application, the silt was used by some of the local uh, co-gen power plants um, that were coal-fired. And the silt, they'd screen the bigger chunks out and use them. And then the silt, the dirt, they actually blew into the boiler. Um, it was like a dust that was blown in to help keep the, uh, the boilers going. And, of course, those power plants have seen all kinds of environmental... Uh, regulations and <laughs> I mean it's the uh, federal government so I'm gonna take you over and show you what's left of this bridge if I can get there it's been a few years and one neat thing about this dump was uh, as a kid I used to come back here and there were milk bottles we'd go hunting for milk bottles um, any ones that weren't broke we would pick out of the dump and take home um, found a lot of uh, farm history <laughs> old fencers that didn't work anymore I found a bunch of farm all parts that were no good um, all kinds of stuff. There was a 1950s uh, Dodge Cornet car back here that they just had abandoned. Um, I'd taken it to the junkyard. It was too rotten. So yeah, it was fun as a kid to explore a dump. <laughs> so you see what I mean as far as the coal uh, dirt or silt? See how fine it is? Um, and it basically is just dirt that is coal. It's, it's fine coal fines. Um, like I said, back in the 90s, it was worth a dollar a ton. Today, who knows what, <laughs> probably probably even less. So let's go over to this bridge. All right, so you can see the uh, Orange Creek there. Uh, it's another bank of uh, coal. And through the, over there, see if I can zoom in. If you can see it there, is what's left of a stone and concrete structure. Um, that's the old bridge that spanned from there over to the other side. It was pretty high up off the ground. It just gives you an example of how significant Agnes was for this area to take out a bridge. I mean, that's got to be 16 feet above the water right now. Um, like I said, there are a lot of creeks that drain into this uh, Orange Creek. Um, but that's where the township road used to go across. So I don't know if I can get a better shot. And the old bridge abutments and the deck are actually still over on the other side of the creek where the rest of the coal is. Maybe in the wintertime I can take you for a walk over there because that's pretty neat. Uh, that's where a lot of the equipment was working all those years. So 
you'd think out all these years since the this started I mean this creek has been orange for many many years and right now there is some like wetlands type uh, grass is growing here um, but this essentially what I'm standing on is probably 20 feet of coal and you can tell by the bank that goes down it's solid coal silt so anyway as far as the cleanup Basically, I'm not really sure what happened or what was going on. Uh, you think they'd be able to stop the mine from uh, draining. <laughs> uh, but uh, somebody had said if you were able to dam this up and let it sit for 48 hours, it would clean it up. Um, and there is proof of that over on where I'm at. There was a project. I don't know if it was a government project. I don't know. It was the previous owner. It had nothing to do with me. They had put in a holding pond with like a uh, settlement uh, area for the uh, particles to settle out of the uh, the water. And the pond at the end of this is actually clean water. So there is some truth to that, that the particles will settle to the bottom. I don't know if it's like an iron or sulfur that's heavier than the water. But being that it's flowing the way I understand, it is... Uh, just going to stay polluted. You can see how far down that goes. And that's, like I said, what I'm standing on is solid coal. And there are some sinkholes here. You have to watch if you're walking around back here. There's places in the, that the ground has settled. Um, there's no mines under this. this like I said, this is all on the surface that washed here throughout the years. There's a big sinkhole back there. Um... And if any of you guys have heard of the Centralia Mine Fire, that's uh, in the next county, but it's not too far from where I'm at. Uh, the Centralia Mine Fire, the uh, fire that's burning under the ground in the old coal mines. Um, not so much now, but I know years ago when I was a kid, you used to be able to, on top of our hill, uh, see some of the haze from that when it was really... Uh, burning <laughs> So that was that's another interesting thing if any of you guys are interested in coal or coal mines uh, check out uh, the Centralia You can do a YouTube search Centralia mine fire. Uh, I know there's been pretty many documentaries on it um, But yeah, this is uh, Anthracite coal now this here is kind of a little patch, but on the other side of the creek what he owns that is all on the other side of this tree line it's 30 40 acres that he has that is just bottom land wetland coal silt um, now on the other side of the creek that's more or less where they did a lot of their work uh, they had the screening equipment over there and they hauled a lot of coal out of there um, there's a lot less bigger chunks they they harvested the the good stuff um, there's a lot of just silt and uh, ash i guess you could say left over so, and this, I know there's trees growing in it, so it's not all uh, totally barren. I mean, you dig over there, it's loose digging. I don't know if uh, some of these trees were smaller. I mean, there's layers and layers of leaves which are creating soil. I mean, you're talking since the 50s, 60s, 70s that it's been this way. So it's, it's kind of getting a layer of topsoil on top of the, uh, the coal silt. But um, to me, this was just kind of the norm growing up. You saw this all the time. Um, and uh, I'm amazed at uh, how interested uh, other people tend to get uh, with it. Um, now over there, through the trees, uh, we have one of our fields that Dad has rented out. It's a cornfield now. You can't see it from here. But um, there's a huge the foundation from the uh coal breaker still over there and there's nice big walls and cement pads and it, it's it's pretty interesting so I'll, I'll do a video exploring that uh over the winter uh when some of this uh, uh when the ground's frozen and i know there's no snakes because that's a pretty rocky <laughs> rocky area over there um i know there's tons of snakes uh i was rotocutting cutting the field over there the one year and there were just snakes going every which way so <laughs> not something I, I want to be walking around when it's still warm out so um see if i can't get through i don't know this 
um, in conjunction with the call, we sold a lot of timber. I think he's got 100 acres of woods, and it's separated by five years. Um, so that way, uh, you get a section logged every five years, uh, and that equals about 15 years worth of growth. Um, so there's a lot of logging roads and logging trails through our woods, or dad's woods, it's not mine. And you can see it's just coal with like grass starting to grow on top. Another thing you'd see a lot of in this soil is white birch trees. They like an acidic soil. I don't know if you can see there's some over there. Uh, a lot of white birch growing in this stuff. They seem to like it. So this is probably going to be a pretty long video to try to upload. Hopefully I can get it uploaded. So. But yeah, basically if you follow this logging road back, I don't know, 30, 40 acres, it's a pretty long walk to get to the end of the property. You're just going to be walking on coal silt. You probably can't see it from this uh, camera angle, but there's a, what today is like a pond. Uh, we always called it the swamp because sometimes it would dry up, but this is a real long, uh, I don't know if it was a silt dam or a silt retention pond. Um, like I said, there's all coal silt under here. And then out through is a, a pretty deep uh, pit that is filled with water. So there are fish in it since then. And I know I've seen snapper turtles. Um, I had a boat that I used to go out on it, but in some places it's pretty darn deep. And uh, the problem was you, <laughs> there's a lot of geese back there. I always have geese hassling me. Um, the other thing that tends to grow in this high acidic cold dirt is uh, bamboo. You see bamboo all over the place. You can see it's kind of starting to go backward now. But, and I can't get on this. This used to be a nice logging road that used to go all the way back to the end of the property and it's since grown in so there's no getting through it right now. So yeah that's pretty well the uh, wrap up on uh, some of the coal. Um, I hope to make this like a series of videos. I'm sure I'll have more as time goes on. So in the meantime thanks for watching.